Hello friends, this video on organisms and population part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about each of these factors in detail. So we will talk start with temperature. So if you compare a, a desert with that of a polar region. So how is the temperature different in these two different habitats? So let's compare. So when you look at a desert, the climate here is hot, dry, less rainfall. Whereas when you compare the polar regions, it is very cold, not only cold, very cold, covered with ice. So it's like snow covered regions. So why is this difference? That is due to different temperatures in these two habitats. Now, if you look at the earth, what do you see? That the equatorial region, this is the equator of the earth and these are the polar regions, North Pole and South Pole. So if you look at it, you see that as we go away from the equator towards the poles, temperatures start to decrease. Now, this is the equator is the region which receives maximum sunlight. Therefore, temperature is maximum in the equatorial region and as we move towards the poles, what happens? Temperature start to decrease. So by the time we reach the polar regions, it becomes very, very cold. So also as the height increases from the surface, temperature start to decrease. And that is a reason why the hill stations are comparatively colder than the plains. So if you look at it, uh, you will see that desert. This desert, which uh, example I'm taking, let's think of a desert area in India, for example, Rajasthan, right? So the climate in Rajasthan is quite hot and dry. But when you compare the climate of Rajasthan with that of a hill station, for example, say Kulu Manali. So what happens in Kulu Manali, the temperature is very cold because as the height increases, as you go higher, the temperature tends to decrease. So with this concept, we see that different habitats with different temperatures, they are very much different from each other. And that is why organisms which are adopt, adapted to live in that environment would live there. So that's why the camel would can live in a desert and not in a polar region. Similarly, the polar bear can live in polar regions, but not in the deserts. So that's one major difference which arises due to temperature. So let us talk about different types of organisms based on temperature tolerance. I mean, which organism can tolerate how much temperature? So there are two types of organisms. One is eurythermal and the other one is stenothermal. So let's see what are these two. So eurythermal are those organisms which can survive in a wider temperature range. Wider temperature range would mean that uh, like it, it can survive at a low temperature as well as at a higher temperature. So the range is wider. So it, it, it is not that it needs a specific temperature for its survival. So it can kind of adjust with little variations in temperature. So they are eurythermal, whereas stenothermal are those who, which can survive only in a narrower range of temperature. So it's like only a few degrees here and there it can survive, otherwise it can't. So stenothermal animals are those which, for example, if there is an animal which can survive only in cold weather. So if the temperature becomes little higher, it will not be able to survive. So they, they would be stenothermal. So basically their range of temperature is less. So they need specific temperatures for their survival. So let's look at examples. So cat, tiger, dog, these are all examples of urethermal animals. That is, they can survive even. So you would have seen the dogs and cats around you during summer season as well as winter season. The temperature variation is like quite considerable amount, but still they are able to survive in both the temperature. That's because they can survive in a wider temperature range. Whereas if you look at organisms like penguin, which can survive only at very low temperature. So if the temperatures become little high, they cannot survive. Similarly, crocodile is another example. And that is a reason why you do not see crocodile present here and there. So they are present only in specific habitats where that narrow range of temperature can be maintained. So if it gets out of that temperature range, it can even cause death. So when I gave you so many examples, a question that might be haunting your mind is human beings, 
we all we fall in which category are we urethermal or stenothermal so what do you think so if you talk about so in case of human beings so if you talk about the external temperatures so we are urethermal because as the external temperature changes we are still able to survive in the summer season the temperature goes up to 40 degrees celsius during winter season the temperature falls up to 1 or 2 degrees celsius but we are still able to survive so we are urethermal with regards to external temperature but when it comes to internal temperature that is the temperature within our body so our body temperature so then we are stenothermal that's because if you look at our internal temperature what is the range of human body temperature so the internal temperature so when we talk about humans so in case of humans it is a little special case because we are urethermal with regards to external temperature but when it comes to internal temperature then we are stenothermal now why is that so when we say internal temperature the body temperature of human beings lies in the range of 34 to 40 degrees celsius now the normal temperature of human body is how much yes 37 degrees celsius right so sometimes when you get fever your temperature might rise a little bit sometimes it goes up to 38 or 39 similarly in certain situations the temperature of the body might fall a little down but it is always that the temperature lies within this range so if you look at this range it is not a very wide range 34 and 40 these two values are like very close by so the internal temperature of the human body lies within a very narrow range and if by any chance the body temperature goes out of this range it will cause death of that person so therefore with regards to our internal body temperature we are stenothermal but with regards to external temperature we are urethermal so i hope the concept of uri and stenothermal is clear Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.